scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. To you be all the praise, mighty God. Someone bless his name. Give him all the praise. The mighty God, King of kings, Lord of lords, exalted above the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ask him for an encounter tonight. Lord, give me a life transforming encounter by your spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Give me a life transforming encounter by your spirit. The encounter that turns Jacob to Israel. The encounter that turns Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, Cephas to Peter, Saul to Paul. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our ground and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crown and worship. Oh, glorious God, save us. we pray that you speak to us this is the house of God you have brought us to bless us to lift us to empower us you have brought us tonight to take away burdens you have brought us tonight to heal the sick to deliver the oppressed may your word go forth and let it return with results in Jesus name amen and amen may God bless you please be seated Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. My commitment is to see that you grow in knowledge, to see that you grow in grace, and you access that which is required to fulfill life and destiny. 
the house of God is not only a place where we encounter the word of God it's also a place where we are prepared for destiny hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and so it's important I remind us again that every time you come to the house of God your heart must be prepared to learn the house of God is also a school is a place of learning where believers are equipped until they become people of stature maturity and power and of course in the house of God one of the um, one of the wonders in the house of God is the presence of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit represents the extension of the presence of Jesus and when he comes he brings understanding he brings healing he brings deliverance and everything that can help the believers conform to the image of God in experience hallelujah and may that be your experience tonight in Jesus name is someone shouting a louder amen, amen. and then let me encourage our global family all who are connecting from across the globe please pay rapt attention hallelujah and listen to the word of God uh, the reason why any man of God is valuable is not because of the person intrinsically is because he has made us custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom the real value of a man of God is not just in his person but the fact that he has been elected by grace to be a privileged custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah so it is the message that really makes us valuable that we are stewards of the mystery custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom and the Bible says moreover it is required in stewards first Corinthians 4 and verse 2 that a man be found faithful hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and so every time the Word of God comes forth it's important for you to know that Satan becomes uneasy wanting to roam around and steal the word from you steal the word from your destiny steal the word from your life so that the word is of non-effect that's what he wants that the word of god becomes of non-effect in your life hallelujah the sower sowed the word and the word correct word correct seed it fell on four kinds of soils and even among the soils that were said to be good, the Bible says it produced three kinds of harvest. First, 30-fold. Second, 60-fold. Third, 100-fold. None of them was because of the word. The word of God had potential to produce 100-fold, but the soil, and according to scripture, the soil represents the heart of men. And a good soil represents one who understands the word and then is apt to put it to work hallelujah the bible speaking about certain believers he says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so they can shout amen they can say i receive turn to john chapter this they open but their hearts are closed it's important that your heart be opened everything god does in his house is for the value of the saints everything god does the worship the testimonies the word the manifestations of the spirit everything about this service i know that we worship god but god is interested not just in receiving worship but in reaching down to us to ensure that he lifts us to a level are we together where his glory is revealed in and through our lives hallelujah praise the name of the lord all right let's get to the business of today you should always leave the house of God wiser than you came, more anointed than you came, experiencing higher levels of liberty than you had before you came. That is how you will know that you encountered God. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. First Thessalonians 5, 23. Let's read together. One to read. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy and i pray god that your whole spirit uh -huh, soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ one more time let's read that scripture and the very god of peace 
sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm teaching tonight on the mentality of a victor the mentality of a victor please write it and listen very very carefully I beseech you by the message of God the mentality of a victor salvation was designed according to scripture to affect the entire tripartite nature of man please look up now we're discussing the mentality of a victor salvation was designed to affect the entire tripartite nature of man as you know man is essentially spirit am i right on that and that that spirit only finds expression in the earth when it is within a body based on the law of territory a spirit is not authorized to find free course in the earth until and unless it is in partnership with a body it is the reason why evil spirits and all kinds of spirits seek bodies and that also includes the spirit of the living god are we together any spirit that functions upon the earth without a body is functioning illegally is the reason why god who is spirit wanting to become flesh had to pass through the womb of a, mo a woman to have a material frame for that body are we together now this is very very important so salvation was designed to affect the entire tripartite nature of man the bible very clearly lets us know that there are three dimensions to man's nature essentially the first is his spirit please do not forget this the second the bible calls it the soul but in discussing the tripartite nature we really call it the mind because the mind is simply the spirit in partnership with the mind that's what you call a soul a soul is simply the spirit having its consciousness with the mind are we together so you would oftentimes see the bible say spirit and body or soul and body it will look like they are just two elements that is because the spirit and the soul the only difference is the partnership of the mind your spirit with your body alone will not function the mind plays a very vital role it connects your spirit to your body so that all of the impulses that come from the spirit can be executed within the body without a mind your spirit has no direct connection to the body are we together now this is very important let's look at a few more scriptures that attest to the fact that god designed man to be tripartite in nature hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2 this is about the most classic scripture that describes all of the faculties of man 12 4 and verse 12 my apologies hebrews 4 12 for the word of god is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder watch this now of soul and spirit everybody say soul and spirit one more time say soul and spirit then it does not stop there the bible says and of the joints and the marrow that is the body the joints and the marrow and then it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart the word heart there is often interchanged for mind so we see the entire expression of man as designed by god i have taught you here that for you to be called man there are certain conditions that must happen to be called man not every of god's creature can be called man are, are, are we together now you cannot call animals man you cannot call demon spirits man you cannot call angels man there is only one group of god's creation that qualify to be called man and there are certain conditions that must be met for you to be called man number one you must be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man number two that spirit must be hosted in a material frame a material body number two you must have the solical faculties of the will emotions and intellect 
capacity to make choices, capacity to make independent decisions. Are we together? If this does not coexist, you are not a man. It doesn't mean you are not alive. But the condition for you to be man, number one, is that you must be spirit. And that spirit must be hosted in a body, a material body. Are we together? And that interfacing that spirit and that body must be the solical faculties of the mind containing the will, emotions, and intellect. Will controls your ability to make choices. Your emotion helps you to interact with the impulses in the psychological realm. Are we together? And then your intellect helps you to contribute, to, to comprehend logically the world that is around you. Without intellect, there is no basis for logic and reasoning. You can have will, you can have emotions, but the intellect is the part of the mind that is responsible for creating synergy and order. You have learned abilities and that happened through the presence of the intellect. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So Hebrews 4 and verse 12 tells us that the word of God is able to dissect the entire frame of man as designed by God. Can we look at two more scriptures? Matthew 10, 28. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. Jesus was teaching and here's what he said. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Is that in your Bible? But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So what part of the man is going to hell? Soul. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus is the one teaching now, not a prophet. And he's saying that there is body and there is soul. Now you see he does not mention spirit there. That does not mean that he does not recognize the presence of the spirit. I have told you that the soul is simply the spirit in partnership with the mind. The spirit together with your soulical faculties produce that soul. The ability to think, the ability to reason. Are we together? The ability to feel the impulses from a psychological standpoint. And the Bible says, do not fear he that is able to kill the body and then not touch the soul. But that the greater reverence should come from him who is able to destroy both body and soul. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. Final scripture. Matthew 16, 26. Let's read together. One to read. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Are we together? So the Bible clearly tells us about the body. The Bible tells us about the spirit as distinct from the mind. Then the Bible now talks to us about the soul. And every time the Bible talks about soul, in one word, the concern is mind. Are we together? Everywhere you see soul in the Bible, the interest there is the mind. Praise the name of the Lord. I found a very interesting scripture while studying and I thought it was good for us to know. Many people have asked, what part of a man lives when he dies? That's not my teaching tonight. I'm teaching about um, the mentality of a victor. But it's important that we understand this so we can appreciate the things that I'm going to be sharing. I found a very nice scripture about Rachel in the Bible, Genesis chapter 35, verse 16 and 16 down to 19. Please give it to us, Genesis 35. The Bible says, as they journeyed from Bethel, there and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed. She was pregnant, remember, with Benjamin, and she had hard labor, verse 17. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, for thou shalt have this son also. Verse 18. And it came to pass as her soul was departing. What part of her was departing? Her soul was departing, for she died. And she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Reading the last verse 19. And Rachel died. What made her die? The departure and the detachment of her soul from her body. The Bible clearly tells us that even as a spirit entity, you are still connected to your mind. Is that true? You read the story of the rich man and Lazarus. It's the most classic representation 
of what happens in the afterlife and the bible tells us that the rich man was there with his full understanding and lazarus was there his full understanding they remembered themselves while they were on earth are we together now and he exhibited qualities of emotions and the rest he he felt for his loved ones who were on the earth and he begged that someone would go and preach to them he even pleaded that water be put and to touch his tongue and all those other things so it's important for you to know because many believers do not even know that man is spirit or it has not stepped into their consciousness that man is spirit and man has a soul a mind and that he lives in the body so the focus of many believers is this material frame that we call body but in any case salvation was designed to touch the entire span of the tripartite nature of man that means salvation starts with your spirit but it does not end there so the first um, place where salvation is administered in man is his spirit we call this the new birth at the point of new birth what happens is that your sins are forgiven the Bible calls you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and then there is a joining together watch this now what you call eternal life or the life of God is actually the Holy Spirit is not something he brings it is who he is he is the life of God are we together at new birth when man becomes the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus he's qualified to partake of the nature of God as it comes by the spirit the new birth brings oneness to the believer with the spirit of god first corinthians 6 27 the bible says he that is joined to christ first corinthians 6 17 6 17 media give it to us first corinthians he that is joined unto the lord is one spirit give us amplified or niv any of the more modern versions i want to show you something but the person who is united to the lord becomes one spirit with him the person who is united to the lord becomes one spirit with him this is profound this is powerful becomes one spirit with him hallelujah so salvation affects the spirit of all men and then brings them into partnership with the spirit of god the Bible lets us know in multiple places in the Bible that the spirit of the believer is in a state of oneness. In fact, it is one of the most striking features of the believer. One of the things that distinguishes the believer from the unbeliever is that the believer is now joined to Christ. He has become one spirit. The second realm where salvation attends to is your mind. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 9. Please write and listen carefully. First Peter chapter 1 and 9. It says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, receiving the end of your faith, the culmination of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us how the salvation of the soul happens. Do not be conformed to this world. It says, but be ye transformed. Everybody say transformation one more time say transformation transformation is the name given to the salvation of the soul please listen carefully transformation is the name given to the salvation of the soul when a man is said to be saved at the solical realm the bible calls it in fact classically speaking is called renewal and transformation renewal and transformation that means at the solical realm, you have not truly experienced salvation until you experience renewal and transformation. Do you understand now? So it is possible that a believer can be saved. You have received the life of God as far as the spirit is concerned. Are we together? But then within the realm of your mind, within the realm of your soul, it is possible you have not experienced that. That is the reason why those who are saved, as we know, continue to come to the house of God and are placed under a teaching priest. Is the reason why even after salvation, you are given the word of God, you are given the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you are exposed to processes like prayer, fasting, all of these together are to help administer the salvation of the soul what you call renewal and transformation 
and the possibilities that your life command will depend on the extent to which that salvation has affected your mind is someone listening now this is very important so the salvation of the spirit is what we know to be salvation the new birth experience oneness with christ the salvation of the soul is what we call renewal and transformation how do you know that your soul is experiencing that salvation how do you know that your mind is being transformed there are many things that the bible puts as pointers number one your ability to make superior choices your ability to make superior choices tells us the level of the transformation that has happened to you number one your ability to gain dominance over your emotions your ability to gain dominance over your emotions that you do not allow your emotions to go haywire and to lead you into ways of perdition when you have dominion over your emotions it is proof that salvation is happening at the solical level and then number three your thoughts what you call your intellect i hope someone is getting blessed already praise the lord so when you say apostle how do i know i am transformed i'm giving you these indices that at a mental level number one is your ability to make superior choices that is where the power of the will comes that you have the ability to make choices quality word compliant choices that moves your life to the place of destiny number two is your ability to gain dominance over your emotions and then number three your thoughts or what you call your intellect influencing your beliefs influencing your mindsets and i hope you know that it is from the realm of thoughts and your intellect that your words and your actions stem from is someone understanding now your words and your actions stem from the quality or otherwise of your thoughts the bible says out of the abundance of the heart you would notice the bible interchanges mind for heart out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh so when you find someone who begins to speak carelessly that person is not only speaking carelessly his his speech is a communication of the bankruptcy of transformation that ha is yet to happen the transformation that has not yet happened at the mental realm at the solical realm hallelujah your words and actions are profound indicators to your level of transformation especially the quality of your thoughts your words and your actions when you find out that your words continue to betray your convictions or betray scripture that tells you that there is something wrong it may not be that there's something wrong with your spirit you are genuinely saved now believers if you do not understand this you will think and the devil will deceive you into believing that just because there is defeat at the solica realm it has affected your salvation no your spirit is saved the problem is not from the spirit are we together the problem is that number one you have not trained your will to make pro kingdom choices why um, word compliant choices you have not gained by the spirit dominance over your emotions are we together and you have not trained your thoughts to be word compliant so your words and your actions continue to show like you are not saved the condition for salvation and encounter with jesus is not anything you do on your own part you just receive into your spirit by faith believing the gospel and receiving but when it comes to the mental realm you don't just receive there is an active participation and the salvation of the spirit happens in a moment the moment you believe jesus as lord and savior whether you feel like it whether you look like it whether you look qualified or not the bible tells us that the moment you believe in the name of the lord jesus christ and his substitutionary sacrifice salvation new birth is imputed into your spirit are we together but the salvation of the soul is a process it is an active continual participation your mind actively participating with the word your mind actively participating with the spirit so you can see someone who you saw him make that altar call and you saw him give his life to jesus genuinely but there is nothing around the products that are coming out of his life through his words are we together and through his actions keep betraying his conviction 
and you meet the person and say what is wrong with you and you say i believe in jesus what else do i need to do it is because they have not known that salvation is supposed to pour in from the realm of the spirit to now begin to affect the mind realm the quality of what happened to your spirit is known when it starts affecting your mind that is when the fruits of righteousness begins to show forth because you see the body which is the last part of our tripartite nature the body is simply an instrument of execution please look up the body does not have any intrinsic energy or power to make any decisions on its own the reason why your body looks alive is because your soul is in your body when you detach your soul from your body in that instant the body will drop on the ground am i right on that everybody here has seen someone die before during or after am i right on that and you can look at a lifeless body it does not matter whether the body is a macho body a lean body that has depreciated through sickness no matter the level of the health in that body once the soul detaches from the body the body lies lifeless so when this body moves the wrong way it is not the body moving on its own the body is simply an instrument that gives your transformation or otherwise expression in the physical realm is someone learning that now when a man winds his hand and slaps the wife don't blame the hand the hand is simply executing the content of his mind that means he has not gained dominance over his what emotions you're good students you should even be able to tell me what part of the mind of that man has not yet experienced salvation the moment you see yourself making wrong choices that lead you to destruction the will as a part of your mind is yet to experience the moment you see that your emotions are swaying you from pillar to post it means you have not through the word of god gained dominance over your emotions are we together this is what you call maturity maturity is simply a physical or psychological way to show that by whatever means largely spiritual an individual has been able to tame his mind to bring that mind to a level of appreciable obedience so you say this man is matured what makes him matured in your eyes he um first corinthians 13 and verse 11 gives us the clearest index for maturity in the kingdom first corinthians 13 11 media help us when i was a child i speak you're speaking like a child i understood like a child i thought like a child but when i became a man i put away childish things so when you say an individual is very matured you're not necessarily saying it in terms of the level of development of his body that may apply but largely that is not maturity actually comes from the realm of the soul the realm of the mind because you can find an adult foolish person am i right on that you know that this man is not young in terms of chronological passage of age but you do not see the decisions that justify that maturity so for instance you can find a man 45 years old but you see his will through his choices the deficiency of a transformed will the choices continue to lead him to perdition number two you see childishness at work in an adult body because there is no mastery over emotions mastery over emotions is one of the clearest indices of maturity when you see a little child the child does not have control the child does not have discipline are we together whatever the child wants he does it or tries to do it he can carry a bottle of glass and just play with it and smash it on the ground and it's not even there is no sense of consequence the baby can carry a document for a business worth two million dollars and eat it with joy while he's tearing it into pieces it takes an adult who is mature to come and say you have destroyed potential for even your own schooling and your own growth but as far as the child is concerned his emotions are without boundaries because that age being that he's bankrupt of maturity and development he's given the liberty to explore any and all possibilities now when that happens to an adult it tells that something is wrong with you because you have not allowed the word of god to help you gain dominance 
Don't forget what we are discussing. The mentality of a victor. And then your body is a helpless instrument of execution. If your body begins to lead you to a path of victory, a path of grace, a path of excellence, well, you clap for it, but the body had no choice. Are we together now? Do you wake a dead body and say, stand up and leave the mortuary and go? If it's resurrection, that's a different thing. But under normal circumstances, that body, even if it's a professor's body, you cannot ask the body, okay, you are dead. But remember, you study. So who was the professor? It was not the body. What made an individual suddenly become a professor? When you say someone is a general in the army and he dies, do you wake the, do you call the dead body a general? Do you call the dead body a CEO? Talk to me. Do you call the dead body a pastor? The dead body is simply a dead body. Do you distinguish male and female dead bodies? Do you now say, no, no, don't put a female dead body here. It's not safe for them. They are all dead. So the idea of, say, you, you get what I'm saying now? Yes. Our focus largely is on the body. But then the realm of the spirit, the gospel really must penetrate your mind and do something to your will, choices. Are we together now? Emotions and then your thoughts, where the intellect comes. If that does not happen to you, your life may never capture the essence of salvation. Listen, this is why many born again believers are frustrated. They are frustrated with church. They are frustrated with their lives because the expectation they had over salvation was that magically salvation will rest upon their spirit and for some reason they will sleep and wake up with their minds and brains, intellect reset automatically. And unfortunately, if you do not have the privilege of sitting under a teaching priest to dissect this and open you up, you may be saved. And your only consolation is that you will be with the Lord Jesus Christ after this life. But as far as excelling is concerned, you may find out that your life may never command victory. And this is also the reason why many people do not fulfill their God-ordained destiny. Why would God come and meet a young boy called Jeremiah in chapter 1 and verse 5? And he was speaking to a small boy. Look at everything he was telling him. Before thou camest forth, I sanctified thee. I ordained you to be a prophet. Who was he saying would be a prophet? Was it the body? No. No. Hallelujah. That is the reason why... Elijah was called Elijah. John the Baptist was also called Elijah. Their bodies were not the same. He said that John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Is someone learning now? This is very, very important. Write this down. Your body, let me talk at least about your body. I'm not neglecting the thing. Your body is the final revealer of the quality. The, your body is the final revealer of the quality of your spirit and the quality of your mind. That means your body, it is in the physical realm. And through your body, the quality of your spirit man, the quality of your mindset, the quality of your transformation is ultimately revealed through your body or the physical realm, if you want to put it that way. Now, please look up. The reason why there is such emphasis on the body is because the body is the final revealer. Let me give you an instance. So, here is a gentleman coming from a village what do you call poverty poverty we know largely is the mind but there are indices physical indices that show the person is poor are we together insufficiency the body is most likely not in a health condition that is desirable now a few years later that gentleman becomes buoyant financially you now say the person is wealthy what exactly changed the mind changed, but to a layman, you do not know that the miracle happened here. 
what he uses to know that the person's life has changed is now the presence of a car am i right the presence of a house maybe the presence of what you call a good life so the body is very important because it is the final revealer of the quality of your spirit and the quality of your transformation eventually we should see the god life flowing to your body through your health through the quality of your life and everything physical that is around you so it starts from the spirit it flows to your mind but then it should happen in your body and i hope you know that the final salvation of the body will happen at the resurrection that's what the bible teaches where mortality will swallow up immortality and the reason why that will happen is not because it was the will of god that that is the final time it will happen that our rate of transformation is largely too slow a man's lifetime becomes so small for mortality to swallow up immortality but that that possibility is here and now that men can attain to that state where their body does not die it's in scripture Jesus looks at the disciples and said, not all of you will taste death. And they were angry. So what does that mean? So who is the person? Let's know who will be alive now and who will die. And Jesus just shot the issue quietly. But it's true. A few people came close to it uh, in the Bible, even though they later died. Chiefest among them in the New Testament was John the Beloved. He was the final apostle who nobody could. He died a natural death. He could not. He literally dominated over Matthiadom. It's not that they did not try. Bible history will tell us, are we together now? That they tried to do every kind of thing that they could do. They poured, they put him inside hot oil, put him inside whatever he came out of the oil. Imagine you are trying to roast fish or fry fish and you put it inside oil and it comes out without dying. Or without, um, without frying. Would you run away? Immortality. That man's body had been so transformed. Something about the reality of the spirit life had gained dominance that the elemental forces had no power over him again. They did not know what to do with him. When a man refuses to die, there's nothing you can do again. Are we together? Because the last enemy to be destroyed in the world of men in experience is death. Every man can be immune to any other thing, but the moment you conquer death, nothing can be done. That is why the boldest man on earth is the man who does not fear death. The boldest man on earth is not the one who fights lions. and fight. Once you cannot fear death, there is nothing men can do with you again. Why do we salute military people? Because by reason of their training, they have been trained to see death as a passage. And so they will boldly step into all kinds of camps of the enemy and shoot you go and try it i know you're a christian you, are, you can go with your bible even go with a bottle of oil are we together the hearts of men fail them when they're about to dare death is the reason why the zenith of jesus's victory was his his victory over the grave death over satan over sin all of these elements when he rose again is the reason why if you do not believe in the resurrection you've not believed in the complete gospel it was a, it was largely the problem between the sadducees and the pharisees the dividing line was the reality of the resurrection is someone learning of these three dimensions i wrote here the most important as far as your excelling in the earth is concerned is your mind please write of these three dimensions spirit soul and body the most important as far as your excelling on the earth is concerned is your mind this is very important first corinthians chapter 6 let's read 19 and 20 using amplified first corinthians 6 19 and 20 it says do you not know that your body, watch this, is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? It says, whom you have received as a gift from God, you are not your own. 
verse 20 it says you were bought with a price purchased with a precious with preciousness and paid for it says so then honor god bring glory to him in your body my apologies i'm reading on the body still write that scripture for body add that scripture for body i wrote it to buttress on the value of your body so back to our discussion of these three dimensions the most important is your mind that means the most important aspect of your salvation after the initial salvation to your spirit is renewal and transformation please write it down renewal and transformation renewal and transformation your mind is very very important listen to me your decisions and your actions are products of your level of renewal and transformation your decisions and your actions and i'll be talking a bit about that your decisions and your actions are products or dependent on your level of renewal and level of transformation if you're with me say amen that means making decisions and actions is not the issue the issue is the lens and the basis if your decisions and your actions are coming from a mind that is not renewed a mind that is not transformed your decisions and actions will consistently lead you against the will of god lead you to a life of defeat are we together you will be reading a lot of scriptures that attest to the fact that the believer is a victor in christ the believer has been called to a life of victory but you may never enter the experience of it not because you are not acting not because you are not making decisions but your decisions are very inferior thanks to the lack of transformation within your mind are we together now so what makes a great preacher yes the anointing comes upon the person but what makes a great preacher is your level of renewal and transformation what makes a great businessman your level of renewal and transformation what makes a great father a great mother it's not your tribe it's not where you come from it is your level of renewal and transformation what makes a great career person your level of renewal and transformation are we together now so what then by this definition if you are god forbid if you are an evil spirit what part of a man's life would you be interested in talk to me one more time excellent students your mind if you are the devil and you cannot do anything about the spirit of that man the next part of call it will be a waste to waste your time around the body knowing that the body is simply an executor are we together decisions are not made bodily the act is the body is only an instrument of execution so when satan comes to the believer the first thing he does is to make sure that he builds a system around your will your emotions and your thoughts your intellect to make sure that the word of god does not gain room there to transform you this is what is responsible for patterns and this is also the activity of spirits that you call familiar spirits it is not that they are so powerful but they have mastered these dynamics so they have lived with a people and lived around a geography for a long time and the moment a child is born they put in that software so you find out that people within a region behave in a certain way because the spirits are mandated to produce through your mind it's like an architectural blueprint if i have a, a drawing from an architect how many of you know i can reproduce this beautiful auditorium anywhere in the world do i need to carry the physical building no all i need is the plan so these spirits now your son is born the plan comes upon him your daughter is born your plan comes eventually you will find out that all the people who are tied to a region behave in a certain way this is where it is it is the reason why when jesus was born they looked at him and said can anything good come out of nazareth in other words we know nazarene there's nazarenes there's no longevity of impact look at the nazarene called samson he didn't last he went up and came down and jesus did not blame them he looked at nathaniel and he said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile only that something began to happen to that jesus he was born of mary 
fathered by Joseph. Are we together? But he refused to learn their ways. The Bible says at age 12, is it not in your Bible? Why would the word incarnate, what will he go and be doing in the temple? I thought he would have just waited until his time of appearing. But the Bible says at age 12, he took responsibility, knowing this that I've told you. As God, there is no record of God learning because God does not learn. He is omniscient. He knows all things. But when the word God became a man, he had to do something to his mind. Your Jesus at age 12, when his colleagues were running around and exploring teenage, he was in church. The house of God learning under doctors he was searching for the things that pertain unto him how do you think he got to know where it was written concerning him by the time he gets to 30 and he's baptized ready for ministry the Bible says he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and with precision he went to the place where it was written concerning him and he read the messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 the spirit of the Lord is upon me he said you find this in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 and the Bible says he began to quote verse 18 now the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had anointed me and all of that when he was done 19 says he closed the book are we together now when he was done he closed the book he gave it to them the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all them in the synagogue was fastened upon him and then one of the synoptic accounts who now began to begin to tell them that that he asked somebody who had a withered hand remember and he says stretch forth your hands luke's account will say that their eyes were fastened on him and he told them this today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears in other words i am the manifestation of this that has been written but the whole work of jesus was done here so the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, let this mind, give it to us, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Clearly you see that the mindset Jesus had that made him a victor did not come from Mary. The mindset that made him a victor did not come from Joseph. The mindset came from the word. He justified that he was the son of God by submitting himself to the word. When Satan came, he didn't say Mary said. When Satan came, he didn't say Joseph said. He said it is written. How did he know what it was written? By opening the book and studying what is written there. If you're with me, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Now, many believers, look up please. Many believers desire to actualize destiny. Many desire believers desire to live excelling lives but most do not understand that salvation needs to pour in please listen to me from your spirit man to the realm of the mind you will never excel in ministry if salvation does not affect this second realm you will never excel in life no matter how much prayer is prayed upon you listen the realm of attacks and curses the realm of all the strengthener of yokes and curses foundations and all of that is the realm of the mind and because satan knows that most believers are not prepared to have the understanding that brings liberty he will create theologies that can believers to be defeated forever in spite of all that Christ has done you would think because Jesus contended for transformation Satan will leave him he still came to test the whole temptation was a test of his level of transformation do you know that the whole temptation if you are the son of God turn these stones to bread watch emotional intelligence jesus would have gotten angry and said you don't know me you are playing with my power i will not only turn the stone to bread we will eat it together i will make sure you eat it as that's what most of us would have done but look at the way the word of god had gained dominance over his emotions there was no need to prove any point he said it is written are you learning now yes then a test comes again and he took him to a holy city and said fall down a pinnacle of the temple and he said fall down for it is written satan now he said you are not the only one who knows scripture he shall keep his chain angels charge over thee and in their hands they will bear you lest at any time you would dash your foot against the stone who is quoting that scripture seven 
What would you have done if you were Jesus? Jesus said it is written, thou shalt not tempt. So even though he used scripture, it was still temptation. Thou shalt not tempt. Look at, look at the control that happened within the solical realm. The word of God had worked on Jesus. And then number three, the Bible now says he led him to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them in a moment. And he said, all these things I will give you if thou will fall down and worship me. Verse 10. Jesus said unto him, get thee hands. Hallelujah. Do you know what it means to see all the glories in a moment? He was so detached to it. You know the level of control and transformation it takes to see money. Remember money. Money and titles and prestige and pedigree and all of these things. And Jesus says, if that is what you want to use against me, you are wasting your time. I am so obsessed about the will of God. It is not about my agenda. All of those things can fade away. And Satan was frustrated. Therein lies the key to frustrating Satan. Every time a man wants to frustrate Satan, saying, Satan, go away is foolishness. I'm tired of you. It's not wisdom. That's not how you say it. You fortify the mental realm such that all his wiles and frustrations become null and void. He does not know what to do with you because if he uses hunger and your individualism, you have risen against it. Turn this stone to bread. You are a man of God. You have the power to do whatever. I can organize the conference. It is within my power, but I will only do what is consistent with the will of God. That is, you are managing yourself. Do you know they say power without control is nothing. There are many people who cannot receive power from God. Not because there is anything wrong with their spirit. God looks at you from a solical realm. And there is such deficiency of transformation. It is a risk to empower you. Do you know what it means to be a multi-millionaire? To be a billionaire and yet be temperate and be modest. Look at the man called Moses. The Bible calls him the meekest man. He was not meek just because he was a stammerer. Most people feel that he was an angry man. You try to become a leader over 2.5 million people and see if you will last one week. Are we together? Control. If you had the power to strike somebody dead and the person looks at you and insults you, ah, you will kill that person immediately. As a lesson for them, like Elijah. And Jesus says, no, do you not know what spirit you are of? Are we together? Yes. There was a man in the Bible who aborted the opportunity to become a prophet. Most likely a double-fold career of Elijah's anointing. His name was Gehazi. Look at me. Did you ever read that any spirit came to speak to Gehazi? It was because of the bankruptcy of light from the solical realm. He was looking at, that means his purpose for even working with Elisha was corrupted. Are we together? And corruption is from the realm of the mind. The Bible now says, when Naaman saw that he was healed, he said, no, I need to bring something to honor the prophet. Elisha said, no, 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 that's fine. You go. Gehazi was angry. He said, you mean you will let this thing go like this? This opportunity? Which leper will come again for us to heal, to get this kind of thing? This man is a wicked man. He's enjoying and I'm here as his boy. Here is my opportunity to shine. Look at the mismanagement of emotions. I'm saying this because for many of you, God is already showing you the reason why you keep praying and fasting. Praying and fasting. And God says, it's not that the power cannot come. It's not that I cannot make you a captain over many. The level of transformation, you would destroy people, destroy your own self. When you are given the power to heal the sick and the power to prophesy to people and your house rent is your house expires your house rent expires and you can prophesy to a millionaire in a moment with accuracy you have one billion three hundred and seventy seven thousand and and a lot of two hundred million just came and it's true will you ask for rent or will you ask for a new house And because of the correctness of your prophecy, I'm not being sarcastic. 
Who will know? So God must work on you. Most believers focus on the spirit man that is already saved. And they just feel that all it takes. And you see, we do not contend for the things that really matter. The Bible uses Jesus as a model to teach us for, for a period of 18 years from 12 until he was 30. He submitted himself to knowledge. Watch how Jesus turned ordinary disciples to apostles. Look at the ratio of teaching. He called them, you are a fisherman, come. You have tendencies for whatever, come. When he brought all of them together, he said, ladies and gentlemen, now listen to me. You are going to be listening to me lecture after lecture after lecture. If you watch Jesus, it will look like he was not serious with his assignment. Because all he was doing was teaching other people. A man who came to die to impart salvation. He was not concerned about his death. He was concerned about people who would succeed him. His death would only happen in 72 hours and it was over. But the men who would carry that message. Do you know if Jesus died properly and resurrected and there was no succession. The gospel would not reach you today. To the point that when Jesus resurrected. When he returned back from that coronation service in heaven, the disciples saw him and they were happy. Instead of putting a party together to dance, he said, listen, listen. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is going to come. The dispensation of the Holy Spirit will start. Jesus acknowledged that there were some lectures he had not finished. He said, there's no time for celebration now. Get back to class. And in Acts chapter 1, he started teaching them the things that pertain to the kingdom. 40 days when it was done, he said, all right. I'm ready to leave the Holy Spirit will come and take it from there and the men stood knowledge they did not know what to do levitated to heaven and then Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when the day of Pentecost was fully come watch this what made the day full do you know what fully come means the time was matured for his arrival it was not just because it was the day of Pentecost Jesus there was a condition the people had to become for the Holy Ghost to rest on them. If on the day of Pentecost, the people had not been transformed to a level, the Holy Ghost will not be able to rest on them. So you, you saw a sense of urgency in Jesus. It was not the issue of anointing. It was the issue of renewal, transformation. And then the Holy Ghost came on them. And look at the first message from a man who had submitted to transformation. This is that. And the guy began to speak intelligently articulating the gospel the same man who a few days ago ran away Jesus began to put certain things in place now the Holy Ghost came and the one you call Peter the fearful had now become Peter the Apostle the chiefest of them hallelujah I learned this and my life changed forever that most believers do not know that God is counting on them that the one factor that is responsible for your rising and your excelling your ability to represent the purposes of God you're a man of God here listen to me you're a businessman here listen to me you want God to do mighty things with you in this end time listen to me it is not just wishing that an anointing and a mantle comes upon you there is a state you must assume there is a level to which the salvation is ministered to your soul a level of dexterity and health at a solical level that is what will qualify you to receive certain precious mantles and certain precious graces are we together when you study, I'm a student of revival by the grace of God. I have studied revivals across continent. I've studied the history of the church in Nigeria with a view to finding out what went well and what went wrong. I have a dear friend who wrote an article about the church in Nigeria. I have a book that was written. I have visited a few sites where revival broke out in Nigeria. And I asked a few questions for the grandchildren um, great grandchildren of some of the revivalists, whether in the east, whether in the south, 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 down to Boni, people like Samuel Ajayi Crowder, Joseph Johnson, I've had the honor to touch the chair, to sit down on some of the chairs that they sat on, to stand on the pulpits that they preach. So I'm not just talking to you about cunningly devised fables. I can tell you, in my study, I have discovered that it was never the deficiency of power. It was never the deficiency of gifts. It was the deficiency of renewal 
and transformation that every time the spirit of revival is about to come god will mandate that there is a requisite level of renewal that the vessels that will be used must attain unto but if the people are not transformed god will have to make do with the state of the vessels as at the point that prophecy releases revival are we together now and so you will find very 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 um very weak vessels but they are carrying precious mandates and they do not last because while the revival is on for those who their emotions have not been dominated by the word of god things like anger things like all of these attributes can just destroy you read through the generals most of these people it was the weakness of the flesh and the human nature the absence of transformation now we have a generation that wants to be victorious we are trusting that the end time revival that mantle will come upon us but most of the vessels all we are doing is just waiting and looking and saying lord well when will it come and god is saying you are about to make the mistakes that were made in the 60s and the 70s why do you think john the baptist was locked up in the wilderness unfortunately John the Baptist did not have any known opportunity to be mentored in scripture. The Bible does not reveal that to us. The deficiency of his transformation is what took his life. He was not Herod. He was angry. There were offense, all kinds of things there. The man who ordained Jesus, the problem was not spirit or anointing. This man was anointed of the spirit from the womb. But he was angry and offended and he said go and tell jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another that means you can be a great man of god carrying a prophetic grace but because of emotional the word of god has not dominated your emotions watch this the word of god has not dominated your thoughts you will find yourself doing foolish things in spite of the anointing on you and now you are wondering what in the world is wrong with me how could you be so anointed and then the solica realm, your emotions haywire. You can boil like somebody who is angry and insult everybody and then you are boiling. You are still anointed even while you are boiling. And people look at you with fear like Elijah. You say, where is this guy coming from? Elijah was transformed, but Elijah is not the best model of who the Christian should be because there were many things about Elijah's life that Jesus corrected. One of it was his anger. Read your Bible. When Jesus came and was vetting through Elijah, it was clear. The people said, look, this man is our model. And Jesus said, no, I've come with a superior template. Elijah was anointed, but that man was angry. Moses was meek, but Moses was angry. That means the moment you want to become a great leader, among the many things you must deal with is anger. Because anger is the cancer of leaders, justifiably so. Because dealing with people is a very, you can abort destiny using justifiable anger. It says in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It does not come by impartation. There is a level of transformation and renewal. Hallelujah. Yes. Most believers are not able to rise because the requisite belief system, please listen to me. The requisite, do you know, there are levels of the anointing that God has brought me into today. I prayed and fasted for those levels years ago and they did not come. The problem was not my prayer. I prayed correctly. The problem was not my fasting. I fasted correctly. I tell you what went wrong. What went wrong was that as a vessel, my level of renewal and my level of transformation has not attained the state where it becomes justifiable for that level of grace to rest. Hallelujah. There are people who pray and say, Father, I'm a kingdom financier. Give me one billion. And God tests them with 10 million. The day they see it in the account, what did he give them? 10 million. And with that 10 million, they are confused. They become a risk to themselves. Because that money suddenly arrived. They make bad decisions. Listen to me. You know the level of transformation and renewal that you have in the presence of opportunities. If opportunities have not presented themselves before you, it is difficult for you to think you are renewed or transformed. Can you see good things? 
and say no to it because it is not the will of God has your will submitted to God that much an opportunity to go abroad for instance an opportunity to get whatever it is an opportunity to have a good life but God tells you this is inconsistent with my blueprint for you do you have the spirituality the maturity and the level of renewal to say yes or no how about your emotions what do you do when your wife gets angry and insults you? Or when your husband gets angry and insults you? Or when members get angry and insult you? Or when social media or whatever it is, the pressure to want to prove a point. Uh -huh. There is no growth and there is no maturity. Your emotions swing from left to right. People can literally program you using the deficiency of your emotions. They can make you do certain things and make you say certain things. Are we together now? And then how about the dexterity of your thoughts, the quality of your thoughts, your intellect? Do you understand the laws of the spirit? Do you understand the laws of the kingdom? Or are you hoping that I will just be successful? No, it does not work like that. What do you know about God? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about failure? What do you know about success? What do you know about spirituality? What do you know about demons? What do you know about angels? What do you know about righteousness? What do you know about the victory that is in Christ? What do you know about challenges? What do you know about relationships? These are the things that frame your understanding at a thought realm. Is someone listening to me? So you can see in truth that many of the confessions we make are will be great. I know that is psychologically consoling, but from the lens of honesty, many people will not be great. Now, they are far from it because there is no superstition around it. It is a labor in the spirit to obtain superior transformation. A CEO is not a body wearing a suit. A CEO is a mindset that has been transformed. Are we together? Perhaps in this case, the thought realm now i want you to lay your hands on your head after praying we are going to get into a serious phase of mind transformation right now someone's mind is about to change i'm about to share a few thoughts with you please lay your hands generously on your head and pray pray crying from the depth of your heart as you are praying, I want you to see all the destinies that are connected to you. If you're a man of God here, see all the destinies that have been praying for your manifestation. In the name of Jesus, a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. A man of God like never before, an end time warrior like never before, a kingdom financier like never before. Through the excellency of my renewal, the excellency of my transformation, something is about to happen to your mentality. I like you to pray, open up your spirit and decree and declare that the former me is about to leave for the new me to come. The former man of God is about to leave for a new one to come. The failure is leaving, the victor is coming. The defeated one is leaving, the victor is coming. The one who is under the yokes of demons and curses is about about to live through the excellency of my renewal go ahead and pray kaparus katebash ebrakatapakatos katefreketebeleketos embrakatapakatakatos katefrekete lish kapareketeparus kiata embrakataparikatos kiata prophecy is about to happen in my life Prophecy is about to happen to my life. I came to church tonight for my transformation. I came to church tonight for my rising. Finally, I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the anointing to rest upon my life. I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the blueprint of my prophetic destiny to begin to work. Pray one more minute. Oh, the failure is living, living right now, no matter how long it has been there. The defeated one is living for the victor to manifest.
in Jesus name I pray every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome one more time every high thing must come down Please sit down, fasten your seat belt, and let me give you the belief systems for victory. The mentality of a victor. Be ready to write. Number one, the first belief system that you must adopt to walk in victory. The first belief system is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Please write. Let's hurry up. We have a lot to cover up and God will grant us grace. Belief system number one that turns any believer to a sign and a wonder is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Knowing that Jesus died for you is not enough. You must understand the implication of his death, his burial, his resurrection. For therein lies your victory as a believer. Ephesians 4. 2 4 and 6 Ephesians 2 4 to 6 it says but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us verse 5 even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ everybody say together with Christ one more time say together with Christ for by grace are ye saved verse 6 and had raised us up together the key word is together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. The consciousness of your positional advantage and Ephesians 1 from verse 20 to 23 tells us the implication of being in that position which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21, far above, let's list them. Number one principality number two power number three might number four dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come 22 it says and hath put all things under his feet say all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church 23 which is his body the church is his body. Every authority that was given to the head was also given to the body. The Bible says the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Say your positional advantage. It's a revelation and it's a consciousness that must come upon you. That although you walk in the earth. The Bible says you have been exalted. There is a seat of authority that where Jesus sat in victory, that is where you sit. Now, it's not just Pentecostal gibberish. The Bible says it and let God be true and all men liars. It is not when you are translated and you experience a great life that you believe it. It is believing it that transits you. This reality is not a physical reality. It is first a spiritual reality. At the point of believing this, nothing in your life will show like this is true. But your assignment is to believe it. I'm sharing with you my mentality. A position advantage. A far above mentality. A far above mentality far above mentality you exempt yourself from the wickedness the vicissitudes of life that you know that i am victorious regardless what happens i am victorious belief system number one is an understanding of your positional advantage in christ can we continue number two the second belief system that programs victory in the believer's life is the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. 
the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. Please write it. First Corinthians 6 and verse 17, NIV. We read that already. It says that he that is in union with Christ, First Corinthians 6, 17. It says that he is one spirit with him. He who unites himself with the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Give us amplified of Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Look at what it says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. You are united with him. Whatever flows from him flows to you and through you to your world. You are united with him. The consciousness of your oneness. Listen, how do you stand and make declarations? These are your hands. The same hands you had as a baby. What suddenly changed in the hands that you lay it on someone and then the person gets healed? What changed? It is a consciousness. What changed the same mouth that you used to take breast milk as a baby, the same mouth that you used to eat all your life, the same mouth you used to look for trouble with, what suddenly changed that you make a declaration in the name of Jesus, let doors be opened, and people say amen and return with testimonies. What changed? The same brain that you have, that you went to class you forgot a lot of things now you can stand and then be telling someone something about his life when you were not there what changed the consciousness of your oneness the consciousness the bible says you are hidden with christ and christ in god now it's a process to get that consciousness to be crystallized but that you are responsible for beginning that journey you must plant that consciousness in you hallelujah is someone listening the victor's mindset number two the consciousness of your oneness your oneness with christ your oneness with christ everything that answers to jesus must answer to me in the name of jesus jesus went to every land and there was a structure for him to rise so it will be with me jesus said as i was or as i am he said that so are you now so are you now as he was as he walked upon the earth he says so are you can you imagine that you watch the life of jesus and see the dexterity the excellence that emanated from his life and yet many believers who claim to be one with him were not manifesting the possibilities that come with that oneness not because the statement is untrue but because we have not established that consciousness number three what is the third belief system for victory in the kingdom? Are you ready? Your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, philosophies, and ideas. Let me take it again. Your life, this is the third mindset you must have. That your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Your life will eventually, ladies and gentlemen, be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. That means the quality of your life, or otherwise, first from a spiritual standpoint, then spilling over to every area of your life, will be a merciless reflection of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Something about God you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about Satan you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about men you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Your life is not just dependent on your job. Your life is not just dependent on government. Your life is not just dependent on relatives or situations and circumstances. Many of us are blaming the wrong things. The real factor that controls the quality of your life, believe me, is your beliefs, your philosophies, your ideas. Is someone learning? Number four. 
Are you ready for the fourth belief system? Without consistent decisions and actions, comma, without consistent decisions and actions, comma, life and destiny remains stagnant. Without consistent decisions and actions, please, if you're writing, underline decisions, underline actions. Without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remains stagnant that means your pace in life is at the mercy of the consistency of your decisions and your actions great decisions great actions and then great actualization of destiny no decision no action and your destiny remains deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 and 20 Without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remain stagnant. How true and powerful this is. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Is that in your Bible? I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, not wish life. Choose life that both you and thy seed may live verse 20 that thou mayest love the lord thy god this is the implication of choosing life that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days and that thou mayest dwell in the land which the lord swear to your fathers to abraham to isaac to jacob to give them please listen to me ladies and gentlemen one day ego better is not a wise approach to life my life and your life today is a product of your decisions a decision is not a wish a wish is a blind desire a decision is an intentional wish backed up by the willingness to pay whatever price to make it happen so there is a difference between a wish many people are wishing not deciding I wish to move from here to here that is a wish I decide to move from here to here means one I have placed that desire but together with that desire I am willing to pay whatever price in righteousness to get there I want the anointing that is a wish I want to know scripture that is a wish I want to be a great man that is a wish those are not decisions until you include the responsibility factor in your desires they are still wishes and many believers respectfully speaking preachers politicians people aspiring to be great it does not matter what kind of prophecy is on your head if you do not sustain the discipline to decide and then to act so if i have two people here one is wishing for a great life I wish I will be great. In fact, I desire greatness. I desire power. I desire to be mightily used by God. Another person right from his or her lowly estate is making that decision. And then the person now takes a step further to honor that decision. There is always action that must honor your decisions for destiny to move. Are we together? I like the way this man is playing his keyboard. I like the way this man is playing his drum. That is a desire. I'm sure one day I'll become like the drummer. You are, you are just wishing. The day you decide to be a drummer, you say, I have decided. What does it take? And the easiest way is to meet those who are already in, they are living the reality of your desire. Sir, what did you do to get this he will tell you are you ready okay there is a school then you submit yourself to it are we together someone says i want power okay you've been saying it from 2018 2019 oh more power 2020 more power someone will say honestly i desire power because the power is required to actualize destiny and to birth the purposes of God in the lives of people. And the person goes to find out how. What are the keys that control genuine power? When that person becomes empowered, the talkative is still there wishing. There are many people who want to be rich. I want to be rich. <laughs> no. Another person will sit down 
and get tired and say i'm tired of stagnation and the limitations that come from it in the name of jesus the bible gives me the, all the allowance to attain unto wealth and abundance what does it take that person will get up and make a decision let me show you how destiny moves from this day i decide that i will not sleep until i spend at least one hour every day studying a book on wealth and abundance following a program that helps me that is someone who has decided someone who wants to become a great man of god i will i will not rest until i spend one day at least praying for one or two hours one hour studying videos and scripture it may not look like all the time but the person has started let me tell you the one who will become the one who is taking action destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy let me repeat destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy that means if nobody ever has a chance to prophesy to your life but you can take the prophecy of scripture and believe it and make decisions out of it and act i guarantee you no power in existence will stop you from manifesting versus somebody who says amen and even places oil on your head and you go back and not act this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare a good warfare someone met me and said one of the father of faith laid hands on me and from that day my life never became the same he was just communicating his observation i looked at him i said you are right but you need to go and see what i did with that lay none of hands don't you think that i just jumped and said oh hands have come upon me no you go back and do something with it hallelujah apostle god is prospering koinonia growing in leaps and bounds i agree but you go back and see the back end of what happens you know how much time it takes to prepare what you are hearing now the kind of research i hope you know that it's not just scripture that brings this information you are going to consult references with intelligence it takes time it's not like there is a book that has all the ideas for you you piece them together by sitting down when others are sleeping you are awake and god is honoring the actions and moving your destiny forward say in the name of jesus shout it say in the name of jesus i declare that from today i make quality decisions and i take quality actions there are many of you here i will build i will build i will build you said that when land was 10 million and you had 30 million in your account i will build while you were saying that somebody was in 100 level the person finished and took a step of faith he said all i have is 1 million i will go and meet the owner of the estate and say in the name of jesus show me favor who will experience favor of the two and he meets that man and he says you're a young man you seem to be very ambitious okay come i will help you take half plot of land and the person laughs whereas the person who does not have anything will say half plot is too small can't you build there and rent it out later on decisions many have not decided to be great many have not decided to be serious you have not decided to make your prayer life a priority do you know something about the human will the anointing of god will always move the direction of your true decisions that when you make up your mind and say from this day forward hallelujah everybody say decisions say actions i want you right now while you are watching me write three things that you will decide upon and you will take immediate action by the spirit and not stop till you see results as god puts it in your heart for some of you is building for some of you, it's your health. For some of you, it's re-engineering your entire life. For some of you, you need to put your ministry or your life in order. Please write it by the Spirit. This is why you came to church. Don't assume, I am a father, but my wife has been the one taking care of the family. It started when I lost my job in 2015. Thank you, sir. With all due respect, the Bible says any man that cannot take care of his family, that, that time is too long for you to remain in that state. Therefore, make a decision that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will rise to my responsibility as a father. I've been having a pain in my body. I said, I will go to the hospital one day. It's like the pain is increasing. You know? Something is swelling around my stomach. Um, I'm sure one day, maybe miracle service November, I will come. No. 
Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Let's hurry up. Is someone getting a new mindset? So number one mindset is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Number two, your oneness with Christ. Number three, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Number four, that without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remains stagnant. Are you ready for number five? Number five is a very, con is a very consoling orientation that you must have. Challenges are not unusual and can always be surmounted please write this is the fifth belief system that programs you for victory challenges are not unusual at all and can always be surmounted psalm 34 19. psalm 34 19. many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him out of how many all Look at me. When you, when you face challenges on your path to destiny, your path to ministry, your path to knowing God, do not sit back and pretend as though it was something that was lack of faith. There are many times challenges are proof that you are moving forward. If you are not driving a car, it does not enter any pothole. If you are not driving a car, you will never face traffic. A car that is stagnant and not moving does not have any challenge. Am I, am I, am I talking to you? Yes. Many of you, the challenges that you face on the way is proof that there is motion happening in your life. And every time you face challenges, rather than pretending around it, hiding it, and wasting time, confront it headlong and be victorious over it, jump that hurdle and keep moving. Okay? You started a business and the business crashed. You made a mistake and gave your money to 419ers. For how long are you going to cry? Use the money you lost as your school fees in the school of wisdom. You see, the thing about the school of wisdom is the moment you graduate, your school fees is given back to you, no matter how much you spend. Listen, I want you to believe what I am telling you. Anything that comes as a loss while learning, convert it to your school fees in the school of wisdom. There's no time. Now I know better. Now I can learn better. Let me reposition myself. There are people today, when you ask them why their lives are like that, they will say, in 1991, I was a pastor. This pastor thing you are doing, we did it all. Something, rain came and washed our church. And then when that happened, Ambrobas came and stole my car and my Bible. Is that why till today, 2023, you are not rising? Is that a valid excuse? Whereas in that same journey, there are people when they started, they lost their father, they lost their mother, they lost their loved ones, they lost whatever it is. In the midst of it, they said, I will wear it destiny till I become. Are we together? Yes. Oh, I, I don't have money to go for the conference, but I must find a way to follow it. Thank God for internet. Please. Let me meet a friend and plead with him. I'm on my way becoming. I should have been at a conference. I don't have the money. Can you help me with 2,000 Naira? Let me try and get, you know, materials from that conference and I will listen to. That is the, the determination. Listen, challenges, I repeat, are not unusual. You are not just because people don't tell you their challenges. Ah, this man is so easy. Things just happen like that. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are we together? Challenges are not unusual. The Bible says in, sec in 2 Corinthians 2.14. Please give it to us. I hope God is speaking to someone. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Is that in your Bible? And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. If you had seen us the first time we held crusade, the first time when we organized a crusade, if they ever told you that this is what this ministry will become, you will not imagine it. Imagine going for a crusade and you do not even have money 
to pay the place where people will stay you heard the story we hired sound people from Kaduna and you can imagine owing and shouting on a crusade ground Jesus heals Jesus delivers and the people you are owing are well, after you finish all that miracle and you know the thing with people they come and receive and go and leave you the God that sent you and brought you let him vindicate you apostle but i started a church i was so vibrant in my vision i saw a thousand people first service only me and my wife my front my friend continue i encourage you in the lord continue continue provided is god that led you but apostle how have all the money that i spent publicizing is not publicity that brings men it's a track record in the spirit you continue god is giving you a beautiful story you are trying to rob yourself of Pray together with your wife. Let her be the choir director. You are the preacher. If you drop offering, she will count it. Think of how beautiful that story will be when God makes your ministry global. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Challenges are not unusual. Apostle God gave me a word that in three months I'm going to build my house. Now is one year my house was not built. Accept it as a deficiency in your hearing. That was not God. Just see that you are a student in the school of hearing. You are growing. Instead of you and say, God, but you said this. Don't make a fool of your understanding. Just say, I can hear God better. Forgive yourself for not hearing well and now start hearing well. And, and if you cannot hear well, borrow the ears of those who have true faith and patience have developed hearing that works you can borrow the ears of others while your own is being trained is someone learning i'm doing something to your mind today you will leave this place a sign and a wonder believe me challenges are not unusual apostle do you know you are just speaking about my case i trek from home to come here we have trekked before this man you are seeing i trekked so it is not um it, don't it's not even an affliction it's just the law of seasons don't it's not an affliction at all hallelujah that's too small to be called an affliction the devil will not afflict you with that cheap thing if the devil wants to afflict you you will bring something that is serious trek with honor Shabako Siata, and you are trekking for koinonia and while you are saying that you are saying this is a testimony in the name of jesus christ you will trek and sit outside and one day light from heaven will land on your head and from that place you will rise to become a champion and people will see your life and say you are so lucky then tell them sit down let me tell you how luck works that one day i trek with no food apostle how about me who has not eaten it's so sad God will raise comfort for you. But my friend, do not leave your training because of that. Don't call things problems. Call them challenges. Do you believe what, what I'm saying? Apostle, I was invited for a meeting. I prayed and fasted. When I got there, I even forgot the anchor scripture. And I preached all kinds of things. Nobody was looking at, I mean, while they were looking at me, I thought I did something wrong. I didn't know that I was not making sense. I was just my sermons. I was preaching. The goal was to preach on faith. I ended up preaching on something else. Don't worry. Make your mistakes with honor. That will become your testimony. It's a ladder you are rising upon. Hallelujah. Run away from people who never met challenges on their path to greatness. You are standing before a risk, a big risk. Challenges qualify people to be able to mentor and raise others. We teach people from pain, not just victory. Victory is what brings people, but pain is what... Let no man trouble me. Is it not in your Bible? For I bear in my body. Before you listen to people, tell them, show me your scars. A testament of endurance. A testament... Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything right? Till today with what I know, I know I did everything right. It was just not the season for manifestation nothing there was nothing wrong as far as i know sincerely so you are saying apostle i've done everything right everything you are saying is what i'm doing my brother continue 
if the cloud be full of rain they empty themselves continue the giving man of god keep praying keep praying apostle but should i start ministry because there's the pressure even though the voice of god has not come stay there and remain the ones i've trained i've started ministry you stay there the blueprint of your destiny is not the same but the day his voice comes, it will come with majesty and it will lift you and compensate you for your obedience. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hmm. Number six. <laughs> Are you ready? Belief system number six. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. The sixth mindset you must have, this world, write it down please, is a world of men. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. If you do not sustain this mindset, respectfully speaking, you will fail in patterns. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships psalm 115 and verse 6 let's hurry up psalm 116 and 15 and verse 6 verse 16 i meant to say psalm 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heaven of heavens are the lords read with me the remaining part please but the earth has he given to the children of men one more time but the earth has he given to the children of men. The earth, as far as the activities within the cosmos is concerned, I have told you, destiny actualization is men dependent, not only God dependent. When you are functioning in the realm of the spirit, you do not need men. But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. You want to walk in victory. You must understand the dynamics of relationships as far as as actualizing destiny is concerned. This was a tragedy of the man at the pool of Bethesda. John 5, 6 and 7. Jesus comes to the man and he saw him there and knowing he had been there a long time, said unto him, will thou be made whole? Hear the man's reply, 7. The impotent man answered and said, I have no man. In other words, I did not invest in relationships. It is not because the water cannot heal. It says, when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another who has relationships will step in before me. Relationships are very powerful. This world is a world of men. It's a revelation that when I caught, changed my life. When I pray to God, I also pray to him to touch men. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The house that you are trusting God for is not in heaven. It's in the earth. The keys are in somebody's hand right now. The job that you are trusting God for, the assignment of God as the father of spirits is to manipulate the hearts of men to be ready to work his purposes in your life. Your assignment is to use the wisdom of relationships to connect. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationship, plants and animals. When I, I, I was doing a study some time ago, when you study um, microbiology and I, I believe even biochemistry, you see the way a, a single cell begins to break itself in rapid succession until it becomes a full grown human. It's a miracle, a, a marvelous miracle. That means when you are rejecting that little cell, you are rejecting a human being. Are we together now? This is how it is. A line, watch this now, a line is simply a connection between two points. Mathematics and uh, geometry teaches us, am I right? You cannot call a point a line. For you to have a line, you must have two points, any point at all, and then you connect them. So what you call a line is simply two points agreeing to be together. That's what you call a line. You alone will never be able to make any progress, but in connection to someone else. 
and if you do not know how to respond to that someone else you can miss destiny if jesus did not know how to connect to john the baptist he would have missed destiny if jesus did not know how to connect to the disciples he would have missed the continuation of the gospel after his ascension relationships are very important belief system number six this world is a world of men and therefore advancement of any sort is based on relationships we're almost there let me give you seven please go back and study this i have handed to someone in this service the keys to the prayers that you have been praying lord why is my life like this are you ready for for number seven who you become as you walk with god please write who you become as you walk with god is by far greater than what you acquire who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means your transformation is greater than your acquisition who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means when you probe the great their, their greatest sense of worth comes from who they have become, not what they have acquired. When you begin to acquire things, chances are excellent that your mind shifts from your transformation to enjoy the things that you have, cars, houses, and all kinds of privileges. But as you walk the school of the wise, and as you walk the path of victory, the victor's path, you will know that who you become is more important than what you acquire on the way. What you acquire can come and go, but who you become remains with you forever. The seventh mindset that you must have. Your becoming is greater than your doing, greater than your having. Most people are interested in having before becoming. They want to be billionaires. They want to be anointed men and women, but they are interested in the anointing, not God. Are you seeing that now? I hope you know that interest in the anointing minus God is idolatry. Your faith and your desire is on the oil, not the relationship. Who you become is greater than what you acquire. Many years ago, I studied this and it did not make sense to me. How will you tell me who I am becoming is greater than what I have? Listen to me. Every time you have something that does not match your becoming, it will live your life. I promise you. It will live your life. It is a law. That is the reason why you find out that people can inherit physical estates or inherit physical things that is inconsistent with their transformation. Eventually, they will lose it through a series of inexplainable events. Who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire what you acquire on the way what you acquire from god is greater is of lesser value than who you become can i give you number eight write this down everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose everything in your life this is the mentality of the victor. Everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose. Everything in your life only becomes truly valuable when it is connected to purpose. Please write and look up. Let me explain that and then I give you the last. I hope God has spoken to you today. That means nothing in itself is truly valuable. It is only valuable to you relative to your perception. Eventually, you will find out that what you admired and were happy about will no longer interest you. What makes things indefinitely valuable is their ability to serve purpose, not the things themselves. For instance, your certificate. Remember the first day you collected it, you were jumping up and down. Now you've not seen it for years. You don't even know where it is, honestly. And quite honestly, many do not care. Do you know why? Because until it is connected to purpose in itself, it will not profit you. Another example, strangely so, is the car that you buy. 
you can buy that car imagine you buy a car you cannot drive and there's nobody to drive you eventually what was a blessing will annoy you because it is not serving purpose the the goal of that car is that it's able to move you to help you achieve your goals but imagine with me that you buy a car for instance and someone puts it uh, you know to to the drive uber or bolt with it for you and something is coming with it and you are using it to pay the school fees of your children you see that that car becomes valuable because it is helping you serve a bigger purpose every time you come to god and say give me the question you hear from heaven is for what give me power reply for what let me make a name for myself make reference to Genesis 11 I don't waste that kind of thing God will tell you I don't waste time on purposeless things Nimrod Kush said let us build a city and make a name for ourselves and God said that is not it Lord give me wisdom and understanding heart Solomon for what I am young and you have given me leadership over a great people who but you is able to lead them give me an understanding heart that I may lead them and guide them in discretion and God said you qualified I will not only give you an understanding heart I will give you riches wealth and honor like no one has had listen to me everything you have in your life that cannot be connected to purpose will not only frustrate you but can be used as a tool by the devil to destroy you even if it is God that gave you beauty without purpose can be converted to a tool of destruction for both you and others intellect without there's what we call evil genius is that true people who God gave intelligence but because it was not connected to divine purpose can be used by the devil for your destruction you watch how Satan used things that God gave men to destroy them Samson was given an unusual ability to be strong but he thought it was just strength he did not know what that strength was supposed to be for it was supposed to be that by his strength he will become a judge over Israel everybody say purpose one more time can I tell you listen ladies and gentlemen most people do not know the importance of purpose they just come and they say, well I just want money and you keep acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and acquiring then you make the mistake of the rich fool you now build banks in this case a bank account snatch them and say my soul find rest and all of a sudden they diagnose respectfully speaking that there is some sickness somewhere and you find out that money cannot attend to it again and they say the man has two weeks to leave and now there are billions stats there he hid it from his wife hid it from his children hid it from himself did not spend it the kingdom was not blessed by it it was kept there wealth without purpose make up your mind today that everything God gives you you are going to connect it to divine purpose Lord why did you give me this lovely voice there are many of you who are singing here who when you hear the worship team sing you smile because something there is a connection God gave you a wonderful voice you should be singing his praises to the nations but you are there just wondering I'm sure God one day my own is that I want to marry that's my own and God is saying for what <laughs> you see I said marriage and I'm seeing people smile <laughs> and now you are using God as a ladder to quickly get married at least let me come to church I know that in church who knows what God can do <laughs> are we together all my own is to get I just want a job that's my own I want to move from this one room to a three bedroom flat why all my friends are living in duplexes and God says nonsense that's too small a reason you can fast from the lens of that lost you will not get the hand of God let me tell you something one secret to answer prayer is connect your desires to divine purpose let me repeat connect your desires to divine purpose Lord give me a husband give me a wife you are not speaking his language for what are we together Lord give me money I want money and you are shouting for five minutes all God is hearing is money money I said calm down this thing is the lost is is lost it's not prayer what do you want the money for Lord I've suffered are you not seeing mm -mm. 
I've suffered is not an answer. I can raise somebody to help you, but money will not touch your hand. When you have a need, he will give you. Will you agree? No, I want it in my hands. And God says, for what? But now watch this. As funny as this is, I hope you are learning. Father, I have learned by revelation and through the ministry of the teaching priest that financial resources are important for my living a comfortable life, important for participating in your kingdom advance agenda. Lord, I am available. That one prayer, I can tell you, expect a reply. Kingdom driven prayers are the kinds of prayers that receive answers. Lost driven prayers is simply carnality using spirituality to meet its need. Hallelujah. We pray competitive prayers. Lord, you have given this person, this lady that came when, when, now I'm here. Oh. Mm -mm. It's amazing. You just listen to the prayer of Christians, especially when they're alone. And you just be God yourself and be listening. Imagine that that prayer is coming to your throne. And just hear what the people are saying. And then at the end, we end it with, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. His name is mighty, no doubt. But that thing you have said needs editing. Father, I'm tired of not being anointed. The other day, I said, let the power of God will move now. And nobody fell. And God says, what for? What exactly? What does the falling do to you? It's because people are not falling that they are not inviting me. I have, I, by now, my life would have been... Everything in life is only truly valuable when it is connected to purpose in john 18 and verse 37 john 18 37 give it to us please john 18 37 pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king then jesus answered thou sayest that i am a king to this end did you see it now to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In other words, Jesus said, I do not have any personal agenda on my own. I am here to bear witness to the truth. I am here to bear witness to the truth. For as long as John the Baptist was walking in purpose, nobody could kill him. When the assignment was done, he said himself that I may decrease that he might increase he now went into doing things that were not connected to purpose and it landed him in prison offense multiplied his tragedy and he was beheaded not a wise way for someone who had worked with god everything i desire in my life i always ask my question i ask this question and and from the depth of my heart how does this that i want serve the purposes of the kingdom i'm giving you a very superior spiritual orientation it is not that god cannot lift you father give me a global ministry the question is for what lord raise me like esther bring a hazardous to come and marry me it's not that god cannot bring a hazardous but for what I just want the joy of being queen. And God said, ask Vashti. That's exactly how she was thinking. And that's why she left the palace. But I realized that the salvation of the Jews from her man and all those who are the enemies of God's process is depending on me. Therefore, take me to the palace. With speed, God will take you there. Believe what I'm telling you. You find people's prayer answered to the degree to which it is connected to kingdom. Lost driven prayer, whether in secret or in the open, will always end you in destruction. Competitive prayer, that one you just console yourself that you are praying. You know our idea of winning on earth is that only one person must win. Because that is how we have been educated to believe winning. So you outshine to win. But in the kingdom, all can be winners because winning is with respect to the will of God, not with respect to who you rise above. In our secular academic program, you are only called a winner when you bring others down and you stand alone. But in the kingdom, you are not a winner when you bring others down. You are a winner to the degree to which your life fulfills the will and the purposes of God. Is someone learning? Now, let me give you the last. And we'll wrap up for today the last is a very major point 
a major mind construct idea mind construct idea listen carefully everything in your life okay verse okay number nine now the only real assets you have are God your peace and your fulfillment please write the only real assets that you have in this life are God, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, with respect to destiny and an eternal perspective, your account is not an asset. The land you have is not an asset. It is only an asset when it is looked at from an economic standpoint. From the standpoint of the spirit, eternity, and destiny, in fact. Your only real assets, the only real assets you have, I repeat, are number one, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. What is fulfillment? Make reference to my teaching, What Seekest Thou? I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. That is God's idea of fulfillment. I take number nine again. The only real assets that you have are your relationship with God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Jeremiah chapter 9 from 23 and 24. Let's find something somewhere to pray now. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man, Koinonia, please listen. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The real asset of the believer is the wealth of your knowing God. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Your real asset is your relationship with Jesus. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace, shalom. I live with you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Please look at me. No matter what you have in this life, and no matter your level of achievement and accomplishment, ask anybody who has lived long enough upon this earth, does not matter what field, and frankly speaking, does not even matter whether he's a Christian or not. You just meet someone who has experienced the blessing of longevity and ask them what things from your experience, among the many things you feel are really valuable, they will tell you peace. The highest definition of success for me is peace beyond progress peace when people die you never say rest in progress you never say rest in investments you never say rest on top of your assets you say rest in peace so peace is a gift that even a dying man can go with nobody can carry his land out of the earth nobody can carry his certificate out of the earth nobody can carry you cannot carry your office out of the earth no matter how beautiful how handsome a few hours after death and the person is disshaped in a way beyond recognition days after decay sets in and that's the end of it all that is left after a long time is the skeletal frame of that person all the beauty and all the glamour fades literally from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return but let me tell you three things that you can take out of this life you cannot take land therefore don't let land replace your relationship with god don't let land re replace your peace and your fulfillment all these three things i am mentioning you can take them out of this earth number one your relationship with jesus can be transported beyond this realm that will be the basis 
of your being with him when all is said and done number two is your peace can i tell you if you even live without peace it already suggests to you where you are going to am i right on that yes sir because jesus is called the prince of peace there are people who do not care whether they have peace listen i say this as i wrap up and i say this with every sense of humility and responsibility i have met very wealthy people who have lost peace for money they traded peace for money medical doctors here will tell you there are people who have a lot of money estates I'm, and i'm not against prosperity but they cannot find peace there are men of god respectfully speaking they are so obsessed about advancement in ministry that they lose their peace there are many who are so obsessed about their reputation they would rather their peace go away and preserve their reputation no in order of priority the greatest assets you will truly have in your life this is the mentality of the victor your relationship with jesus your peace and your fulfillment i have had the honor of praying for people some of them minutes before their transition and i have seen people laugh as they leave you know how people will say ah i'm going mm -mm. they were not even desirous of prayer because all has been put in place they put everything in place their will they live useful lives some of them have had the honor of having their children around them one of my dear pastor friends in Kenya I think one time when his father was about transiting in glory I had the honor of seeing the father lovely family that man even in his old age and in his health state he still went to church and when it was his final moments the family members gathered around him like this what a beautiful way to transit gathered they sang hymns they sang songs they did everything and then the wife went into the kitchen their mother and when she came out he smiled at her one last time and transited to heaven versus hold on let me paint another picture versus the person who sits down you've cheated people you've lived a wicked life you refuse to receive jesus as your lord and savior downplayed everything spirituality spent your life looking for money spent your life making ends meet and finally you are told you are about to go i present to you two people two people at the end of their lives there are people today there are all kinds of arguments about their properties arguments about their estates they've gone they've long gone long gone long gone if Jesus comes and meets us while working then hallelujah to him we transit in glory and grace but if he stays long enough for us to finish our assignment and we enjoy length of days because I hope you know the purpose of long life is not fear of death hey look at me I hope you know that the purpose of long life is not fear of death I hope you are not offended the purpose of long life is not fear of death if you are afraid of death what you need is Jesus not long life <laughs> you will not die don't worry am I not the one who speaks over you you will not die but the purpose of long life hear me the purpose of long life is not to manage the fear of death that's not a wise way to live it's not a victorious way to live did the bible not say for for me to live is christ and he caused death gain is it not profit that made you go for business <laughs> and now he says there is another kind of profit when you transit are we together most people cannot talk about death as I'm saying like this. Oh, oh, Apostle, you are talking like this. Are you? I'm not going anywhere. Look, you don't know. You don't know my agreement with God. Don't, don't listen. Me and God, we are not stupid people. I'm not serving God for nothing. So when I talk like this, it is my priestly duty to you. Don't think these are some finals. You will see me next week, next year. I'm, I'm here. I'm, listen, I'm only teaching you the mentality of the victor. Are we together? If you cannot talk like this, when I make the altar call, come and stand here. Because that, listen, listen, it's a very, if you do not have the confidence, if you fear death so much, it's because you do not know Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Not to be on a journey going, to be present with him. 
what then is the excellency of saying it is finished that way you can you can smile at life listen for all those who are elderly here and are listening the truth is if christ tarries all of us that queue we're going to join it and transit so let me advise every person here i hate to be i'm not bringing bad news but let me advise every elderly person elderly here means what what age do we put elderly let's say from 60 and above sincerely do not fear death take the time you have to prepare your life with honor that if Christ tarries, you can transit with joy. That I have raised children that love the Lord. I have spent my life serving the purposes of God. And even if it is one year left, do it with honor. Let the nobility of that one year swallow up the remaining years of wastage. If you cannot pray, you can give. If you cannot give, you can send men. There are people as they die, they remember the buses they provided for people to come to church. They remembered televisions that they set up for people to hear the gospel it is the reason why many of us are rejoicing why we are serving God because if I die today you've heard me say it is only that I did not finish my assignment or, uh, but th that is I'm just giving you an, an a reason I'm saying if I die today that may be my only challenge but I'm still alive through the teachings that go spread across lives look at men like Reinhard Bonke I was listening to one of his teachings a few days ago and I said my God men who though they are dead they are still alive my my eternal mentor Dr. Miles Munro long dead but he's still alive today we have become extensions of his legacy when God raised him he saw us in him Quit that life of fear and that makes you live a mediocre life. Spend your life doing the things that matter to be victorious for the kingdom. I present to you the mentality of a victor. You cannot have this mindset and be defeated in life. You cannot have this series of mindsets. I do not believe that is all you need to learn. But I tell you, this is a rich capture. This has come from the study of scripture. This has come, respectfully speaking, from listening to people who have made marks in the sands of time, in ministry, in business, in life. You walk this path and watch the beauty and glory that emanates from your life. My call for you, therefore, is not just to sit down and say, I had a wonderful service, but to go back, be a student of scripture, Match these things against your life. I'm 20 years now. I'm 30 years now. I'm 40 years now. I'm 50 years now. I'm 80 years now. I'm 90 years now. It does not matter. The unit of destiny is time. And the wise know that you can waste time, you can spend time, and you can invest in time. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? This is my mentality. Believe me when I tell you, when I wake up in the morning, this is it. When I say I can never be a failure, it is not a blind Pentecostal confession. I have surrounded my life with these thoughts. They continue to grow in me perpetually. You have this mentality. Listen to this message again. Get these principles. Write them. Listen to them. Pray them. Believe them. Develop on them. And return back a few months a few weeks a few years and say apostle thank you for not hiding this truth thank God I came for koinonia today I have shown you the roadmap out of a life of mediocrity I've shown you the roadmap out of a life of you do business without this mindset it will lead to failure get a job without this mindset it will lead to failure do ministry without this mindset it will lead to failure run a family without this mindset it will lead to failure but don't do any other thing and get this mindset. It will force you into an action that will turn you into a victor. Please rise up on your feet. Can you hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can? I just want us to pray one prayer. Hold hands with someone and thank the Lord for what you just heard. Begin to say, thank you, Jesus. He says, blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your ears for they hear. The way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Go ahead and pray. Those of you who are watching from your homes, connecting by way of the internet, 
are you connecting with someone to pray the mentality of the victor a victor in christ is beyond just saying receive it is beyond just saying take it as wonderful as that is is beyond just confession it is a victor's mentality go ahead and pray someone pray apostle i've wasted a major part of my life no more I'm making a decision. I see that the area I've missed is the area of decisions. Everyone pray. One last time, I'll run through the list. Nine of them. Number one, the belief systems for victory. Keep praying. An understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Number two, the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. Number three, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Number four, that without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny will remain stagnant. Number five, that challenges in whatever form they come are not unusual and they can always and should always be surmounted number six that this world is a world of men therefore advancement of any kind is based on relationships first your relationship with God then your relationship with strategic men alliances number seven that who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire who you become as you emerge in life who you become as you learn God is by far greater than what you acquire number eight everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose nothing in itself blesses you by default it only blesses you indefinitely when it is connected to purpose wealth connected to purpose becomes value intellect intelligence connected to purpose becomes valuable and then number nine which is final for this our time together tonight is that the only real assets that you will have at the end of your life are number one your relationship with god number two your peace Number three, your sense of fulfillment. Every other thing is transient. Every other thing from an eternal perspective is mundane. You cannot transport them out of the earth. Every physical thing that you hold valuable today is only as important to the degree to which it serves a divine purpose. Go ahead and thank God for all you have heard. Blessed are my ears for they hear. Blessed are my eyes for they have seen. Blessed is my heart for it now understands the ways of God. By these truths may my life command victory from an eternal standpoint and then victory even upon the earth. For in Jesus matchless name we have prayed. For in Jesus matchless name we have prayed. Hallelujah. There are many people who at the end of their lives indeed they will say, I lived a, a defeated life. Why? Because they never have a chance to be taught. This is not something you guess. This is not something you invent. A few people had the opportunity to learn pieces of these truths and they commanded certain levels of results. Now you have an, a, 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 the privilege given by God to hear a very rich capture of these belief systems. The responsibility now is over to you to go back and war with it. If I were you, I would wake up in the night, even this night, and pray these things. Look at my note. Listen to the message again. Give my children, are we together? Give my wife, give my husband, give my relatives, everybody around your life, listen to it. Take it and give some of your business partners. Instead of arguing in bitterness about mundane things, these are destiny-defining belief systems. You focus on this and you will turn back and not find Satan again. 
because you are engaging this truth you weary the devil when you bury yourself learning this truth every single one of them is word based you can be sure that there is eternity connected to them they will not lead you to perdition they will not lead you to defeat this ministry you see by the privilege of God's grace making the impact that it is making across the globe is on the strength of these belief systems these are the foundational beliefs that have constructed my understanding they evolved me from my lowly estate to what I have become and what I'm becoming hallelujah can I speak over your life in the name of Jesus father I have taught your people like you have put in my spirit I pray that the doing grace the grace that makes them to take advantage of this truth and act upon it until they emerge victorious. Let that grace be released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every faulty belief system you may have sustained that has been responsible for poverty, failure, sickness, defeat, anger, all kinds of health issues. In the name of Jesus, by this prophetic declaration, I declare, let there be a transition in your mind. The salvation that has only found expression in your spirit and has not yet flown into your mind, transiting you to a superior believer. May that transition begin from tonight. As a man of God, go and prosper. As a business person, go and prosper. As a career person, go and prosper. As a family person, go and prosper. Your days will be filled with victory. Your days will be filled with prosperity. And hear me, every weapon of darkness that has followed you until now, programming failure and exhaustion and defeat, I decree and declare, you are delivered now and forever. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed let me give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus tonight what a night to make it right every service we make the altar call but I believe this is a very special time listen remember I told you the assets number nine that the real asset you have in your life is your relationship with Jesus your peace and your fulfillment all three only come from Jesus you cannot have the life of God without him you cannot have true peace without him and you cannot have fulfillment without him you're here and you are saying apostle I truly want to make it right with Jesus tonight wherever you are I'm only asking for one genuine person and for someone who is saying I I have given my heart to Jesus before but I want to clarify things I that, that if for any reason he calls me today let it be that it is heaven i'm going to let it be that it's with him i will be for the rest of my life wherever you are i'm going to count one to five please leave your seats and come and stand here one god bless you celebrate them as they're coming convicted by the spirit it's a new season for you come god bless you god bless you it's a new season come 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 you can make it right once and for all. You can begin to live a life of purpose, a life of grace, a life without fear whatsoever. Knowing that in this life and even in eternity, you have had peace with God. Koinoni, are you celebrating them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. All of you who are in the overflows, you can move to your projector screens. And then those who are following from across the globe, I'd like you to be prepared to pray as I pray this prayer and do well to let the media, the public relations department know. Follow the links that you find there and then they'll give you a chance to let us know that you've made a decision for Jesus. Thank you so much for those of you who have come. This is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. And I salute you for coming to make it right with Jesus and for some of you to rededicate your life. This is why he has sent us. May I please request as a sign of surrender that you lift your right hand to Jesus and say this after me say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification 
right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I go for whatever and backward never amen father thank you so much for your precious people they have taken a bold step of faith they have decided to make it right with you and the word of god declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away thank you for bringing these ones to yourself i pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus, you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. I commend you to the word of the Lord and I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. And I rebuke everything that is not of God, every foul spirit that has oppressed you until now. Be delivered once and for all because you have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen thank you please may i request that you follow our counselors they are wonderful people ready to have a quick word with you and pray with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go is this the best you can do koinonia celebrate them hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord now let me just one quick announcement before we leave i want to encourage you all through this month of july there are very destiny provoking teachings that the lord has placed upon my heart these are teachings that connect directly to life and destiny it is profound wisdom that is going to be coming to us please make sure that everyone you know and everyone around you is here and then connects if they are beyond here god has helped us he's lifted us this is not just a passion for crowd. This is a passion to see that as many people have a chance to learn the ways of God. Hallelujah. So please do well. Give this message to as many people as you know. Let them listen. They will thank you. Make your life count. Don't just be existing. Participate in that which God is doing. Let your life become the reason why someone gets superior knowledge. You might be delivering someone. Just one of these nine points alone can bring liberty to someone. May the Lord bless you as you commit yourself. Remember, I have taught you, koinonia is not you coming for service to listen to a man. It is you being equipped to go back and be a witness. You must take that responsibility of a witness and know that you are an extension of koinonia as you go. Do not allow people die and fail around you while you waste this vast knowledge that you have. One of the ways you make what you know to stay is by sharing it with others. Not from a standpoint of of an argumentative standpoint or in pride but by humility knowing that God has opened your eyes to see help someone become part of someone's success story and the Lord will bless you in Jesus name let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell with the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.